Hey, this is June from Turning Point Life Investment, and this video is for the week ending in February 7, 2009. So we ended the calendar month of January last month, or last week. So what I'm going to do is take a step back and take a look at a longer time frame. This is going to be a 10-year monthly view of SPY, or ETF, or S&P 500. So as we know, we are pretty much near the bottom of this previous support line right here. Okay, this is going to be around the um, 75, 74 ish area. And that's where we pretty much tagged it last time. Okay, and this is pretty obvious why we found bottom because this is support. This is a critical support, and that's why um, we have buyers stepping in as we approach this level. So just take a look at what's going on with prices right now. We are managing to somewhat develop a, a kind of bottom, a kind of support, I would say. Notice how the momentum has definitely shifted. We have three huge large downside candlestick but right now you see the size of the candlestick is much smaller and it's also building a base around this 80 area slightly above the previous support of 75 so it's telling us pretty obviously that the uh, the sellers aren't able to push it as low as it once did and there's enough buyers to come in and, and step in and basically hold its support level preventing the market from tanking any further okay and right now we're basically in in a kind of sideways market because even though we do have buyers stepping in there's not enough conviction not enough momentum from these buyers to push it higher next we go into a three-year weekly view notice how um, we're not as stretched out as we are with this 20-week moving average all right so notice how every time a market moves in one direction makes an impulsive move it has to correct Okay, nothing goes straight down, straight up forever. Just like this, we had a nice down, uh, downward trend. It corrected towards this 20-week moving average. And then we, we had a huge downward trend, and now the market is trying to correct itself, trying to come back to this 20-week moving average. Now, there's basically two ways that the market can correct itself, either through price or through time, or a combination of both. But right now, you can see how the market is correcting itself through time. It's going sideways. It's dragging itself out. If it were to correct itself through price, it would rally up and come up and tag this 20-week moving average. However, it's not doing that. It's going sideways, allowing this 20-week moving average to come down instead. And that is why we're seeing this kind of choppiness sideways correction because it is still trying to work itself out. Um, the larger the move, the larger the decline here, the longer it will take for this correction to, to basically finish up. And of course, the big question is, when will this correction be over? And the only way we really know is if it breaks a certain support level, such as this right here, okay? This is the, the level to look at, the 75. If that breaks, then we're pretty. it's pretty obvious that we know that this market was pretty much done correcting, and it's ready to start a new leg lower. So this is a six-month daily view. You can see how pretty much um, not a whole lot has changed from last week. We are still stuck within an upper and lower defined boundary of 75 and 95. Right now, the, the main thing about indicators is that they don't really work that well for the majority of them in the sideways market, such as the moving average okay, and the MACD. So you kind of have to throw those out. All right? You don't want to use that as part of your analysis right now because they don't work well. They work better in a trending market. The only thing that works relatively decent in a sideways market is stochastic. But even looking at the stochastic, it's right in the middle, so it's not telling us a whole lot. So what I like to do is just take them away. You know, there's less confusion, less stuff bothering your screen, and all you get to look at is prices. So from last week, we did mention that it's still stuck within a range. But what's funny about this week is that it's still stuck within a smaller range. Okay? I think this is a bad tick, so you have to ignore this. Uh, but nonetheless, we are still in a range within a smaller range. Okay, with upper boundary right here at 88 and lower at 80. So this tells you just how confused and how indecisive the market is. Pretty obvious if 88 is broken, we will probably come back up towards the 95 area. And if 80 is broken, we pretty much have to come back towards the 75. So this gives you an idea, it gives you a target of where to shoot for if a certain support or resistance is broken. The next thing I want to look at is the VIX. Okay, so I mentioned the last week, uh, a couple of videos ago, that we are in a consolidation range for the VIX. But just take a look at what's going on with the VIX. It's hugging this upper uh, resistance line a lot more than it would be down here. 
So it's telling us the VIX, at least, it's holding up well. The VIX is starting to look a little bullish, which translates to a possible bearishness for the market. Here's something that's interesting. Okay. Okay, I have two charts up. One is the VIX up here, and this is the uh, SPY down here. Normally, the market moves when... There, I think you should be able to see it now. Okay, but normally they have an inverse relationship. If the market moves up, the VIX goes down. All right, very just case in point. The market moved up here, and then the VIX dropped down here. But notice how even though the market moved up towards the previous, uh, close to previous resistance, the VIX pretty much stayed relatively flat for this week. Okay, so it could e indicate either one or two things. Okay, the VIX is a measure of the amount of calls and, and puts being bought. The more puts that's being bought, the higher the VIX is, uh, goes. Or it could mean that there's a lack of call buying um, in the market. So if that is the case, then there's a little bit of bearish divergence here, as, as long as the VIX is telling us, right? So it's telling us either people are loading up more puts um, as the market is going higher, or there's not enough bullish participation. It, either way, it's indicating some sort of bearishness for the market. Not to mention that it's also uh, much closer to this upper resistance line. So it's showing a little bit of uh, upside potential breakout for the VIX, like I said, which translate towards a downside momentum, toward downside breakdown for the market. So what I've shown you is just one clue into the market. It's not a, it's not a definite thing that if this happens, then the others happen. I mean, as traders, we're basically taking clues that the market is giving us and we're piecing these uh, puzzles together to find a clear picture. So if this has any uh, value in the analysis, then this might tell us that um, this rally this past week is a false rally and we're possibly potentially heading for a down week next week. Okay.